You've probably all seen AI generated images by now. There are quite a few videos on how this works, but simply put, an AI is trained on billions of images from the internet, and you can make it draw what you want from a text input. So if you want an image of Donald Trump fighting Darth Vader or a polar bear riding on a paddleboard, then you just type it in, and hey presto, it'll make some nice images. It's particularly good at drawing portraits of people who are really famous, and it'll have a pretty good go at some mid-level celebrities too, even some YouTubers. It's kind of funny how all the pictures of Colin Furs have a crazy invention or a funny looking car in the background though. But is this type of image generation of any practical use to us besides generating art or funny pictures to laugh at? I'm using Stable Diffusion for this project, which is open source, and you can try it for free, and I'll put the links in the description. For the actual images in this video, I used dreamstudio.ai, and that's because it's the same algorithm but much faster. You get some free credit, but after that it was about $10 for a thousand image generations. I've been thinking about building something in real life that AI draws for a little while, and I posted some of my previous results on Twitter and Instagram. It started with a human making machine and a dog washing machine, but the first results were too weird and I don't own a dog. I also tried inputting words around practical things that could be useful like machine that helps humans make food and domestic robot. Most of the machines it drew just looked like something from a factory and most of the robots looked pretty generic. I guess that's what all the source images were like, and that's what it was trained on, so that's what we can expect to get out. After some more experimentation, I found that the phrase experimental robotics equipment came up with some absolutely fantastic looking stuff, although it was hard to determine what the machines would actually do if I tried to build one. So using that phrase combined with some other things, I got some more interesting looking project ideas. You'll notice that whenever there's a person in the image, they're typically a white male, but that's the result of the images the AI was trained on, so I guess it's a reflection on the tech industry and lab environment where you'll find experimental robotics equipment, so it's society's crime rather than the AI itself. It only knows what we tell it after all. I settled on experimental robotics equipment for playing music, which made some crazy looking stuff. There are plenty that are obviously based around robots playing keyboards or other things, but my favourites were the ones that didn't look like traditional instruments. And I settled on AI telling me to build this one. By the look of it, it's got five things you can grab which would match a pentatonic scale quite well, so this seemed like a good start. There are also some caster wheels as well as some other junk around the base which I'll probably ignore. It's a pretty basic shape to draw in CAD, but what will the AI tell me about its hidden features? Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. Before I tried to assemble what AI had wanted me to build, I wanted to think about what other features there were, specifically the handle looking things that hold the round grabby bits. So I asked AI to show me equipment handle operating instruction, and it looks like most of the images describe some sort of rotary action. So I designed some parts to measure rotary position using magnets and Hall effect sensors. These consist of two parts that rotate against each other, one with a Hall effect sensor in, which is a little electronic component which can sense how far a magnet is. The other part has a magnet in, and then we can get an analogue signal that we can read with an Arduino that tells us the distance from the magnet. So if we get a magnet and put that near there and read an analogue in, we can see that we get quite a nice smooth curve, and it's very accurate depending on the distance. If it's really far away it doesn't work at all, so we need to be quite close, but this is the sort of thing that's used in twist grips on e-bikes. So the plan is we can move these levers, of which there are three in total on the device, and the Hall effect sensor will measure the position of each one. So if we plug that into the Arduino, we can see that we get quite a nice curve there, and it seems pretty accurate to a point. Right at the top it peeks out, but that's good enough for our purposes. The squashy pieces attached to each handle look a bit like old fashioned car horns, and I was going to use old fashioned car horns, but I decided to ask AI instead. It came up with some pretty cool stuff that probably could have done with some further investigation, but in the end I decided just to make the simplest thing I could to squash a magnet near a Hall effect sensor. 
So I just split the ball in half, in one half I've got the Hall effect sensor and two springs, and on the other half of course is the magnet. So the two halves fit together, and you can compress the springs to push them closer together and they spring apart naturally. But I really wanted it to look like the ones that AI designed. So I decided that we need a rubber skin to go over there, so I got some of these stress balls that have these little water balls inside, cut them open, and got the balls out so that we're just left with the skin. And those things are pretty stretchy, so it's really easy to put them on over my 3D prints, and that fits pretty snugly. And that gives us something which we can squash, and that will hold the whole thing together as well. Now that rubber's pretty grippy, and that means some bits of blue plastic have got stuck in there. But if we go back to the original AI drawing, it's got little flecks in, so it's almost like AI knew that I wanted to do this. The main enclosure for this fits together in two halves, I've got three handles and five squashy things which are there to play the five notes of the pentatonic scale, or at least that's what I think AI wanted me to build. And the levers lift up as well, all three of them, two of them will actually stay in position when you put them there, and the other one won't just due to the angle that they're fitted on there. Yep, I decided to put the legs on with casters on, and these are casters off office chairs which aren't terribly great in all honesty, but that seems to be what AI wanted. And I think those are there so we can spin the whole thing round to access those squashy things and access all the handles. So that's probably quite a good piece of design that the AI's invented. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for business, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experienced many challenges related to their CAD and PDM systems. Since Onshape was built from scratch in the cloud, there are many unique advantages, like built-in PDM and the GitHub-inspired branch and merge model to test new ideas. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs, so an Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. Onshape is always growing. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. Recently, Onshape added PCB Studio to connect ECAD and MCAD designs, and they also just acquired a company called Cloud Milling, which means CAM is coming to Onshape in early 2023. All of these updates happen over the air automatically, which means your company will never have to manually deploy a CAD update ever again. Onshape also just released a connection feature with Arena PLM, which synchronizes engineers, manufacturers, and suppliers, enabling the instantaneous sharing of product design information at the click of a button. So I'd highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business. And you can try it out for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton. So there's a lid that fits on there, but before that we need to put some electronics in. So yes, we've got the same Arduino Mega, and that's fitted into a box with a MIDI shield. And a MIDI shield are these ports on the top here, which are 5-pin DINs, and these are the sort of things that you get on musical keyboards that allows you to convey musical data. So we can control musical instruments from this. So it fits just in there, which is quite neat, and I've got a breakout there to take all my analog ins and get my MIDI outs. So with that all assembled, we've got our ports neatly presented at the back. Now MIDI is only data about the notes we want to generate, so to make actual sounds, we need to plug it into some sort of synthesizer. And I've got a little synthesizer here that's got MIDI in and audio out, and it can make the sounds of various instruments that we can select from a little dial on the front. I put a ring of LEDs on the front just like the original, and as I lift the lever, the LEDs change colour. But as well as change colour, this is actually an octave shift function for the music. As well as the pitch shift lever, we've got two other levers that we can use as separate MIDI controllers for MIDI effects, but before we demo the whole thing out, I think we need to find something better to plug it into than this tiny synth. Robots, we Yes, I went to visit Sam from Look Mum No Computer, who owns This Museum Is Not Obsolete down in Ramsgate in Kent, where he's got the Furby organ and loads of other projects from his YouTube channel, like the Game Boy Mega Machine. And an organ made of owls. 
Right, you've seen what AI drew. I so have. So here's the real thing. So this is experimental robotics equipment for playing music designed by AI. My gosh, what the heck is I can't that? Get sheet off. Wow, that looks friendly. That looks really friendly. Ah, oh, it's like, hello, how are you doing, buddy? Is it? It looks like a vacuum cleaner. That's amazing. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, they're all. St oh, they feel very strange. <laughs> oh, AI's got. Oh. That's what AI told me to build. Yeah, and uh, I can tell you what, it has. It's got a definite personality. It uh, sort of looks like you, James. Have you been? It's been looking at. <laughs> looking at the image. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't wait to plug this in. Are you? What are we plugging it into? I think the church organ's going to go great with this. Right. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Well, thanks, Sam. So AI really does know how to make experimental robotics equipment for playing music. Especially church organs. That's, that was pretty good. Good, good job. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Oh, is it this one? Hello? Oh, is anyone there? No. <laughs> <laughs>